All right, this is a really easy lesson for me because I recently wrote a blog post on this subject. I'm putting the blog post link uh, down below here. Um, I actually posted it on my joesoto.net site, which is going through a redesign process right now. I then also put it on my LinkedIn profile. I put it on my on Medium. Um, I'm, I believe in cross-promoting uh, and have a content that you get, but uh, I think this was probably one of the more clarifying articles I've written for my audience to help them understand my philosophy to sales. And some of you probably have read this already, or you saw me post it in my on my business Facebook page. But, and, and I titled the blog post, How I Made More Money Once I Stopped Pitching. And it really was a basis of, based from a story of, of when I walked in, I'll never forget this. Uh, it was when I, I walked in and we had our own, we had, when we first started our social media agency, I had a binder presentation. And I had flip charts and all this. I had some client examples, and I used the binder as my presentation. Today, I don't do that. In fact, I just grab my laptop and tell them, you know, when it gets to that point where I need to show them anything, I'll say, you know what, do you mind if I show you some examples of how we work and what success looks like for some of our clients so you can kind of see in real time what this looks like. I and mean, you can decide whether or not this is the same type of results that you do want for yourself. And they say, yes, of course, and then I show them on my laptop. But I go through real pages and just kind of take, give them a walk through and make their mouth water. We'll talk more about that when we talk about presenting your services. But uh, I remember early on, this was like 2011, and, and uh, I, I knew better because when I, I had been teaching sales training for 10 years prior to this, but we did have, you know, and particularly in the industries that I trained in, I trained in credit and collections, I trained in telecom, I came out of telecommunications back in 1990. Uh, 7, 96, 97, 98, and uh, uh, they forced us to use presentation binders, but I realized that, uh, the, I think where things really went to a different level for me was when I walked into an appointment and I forgot my pitch presentation. I forgot my, I forgot everything. I forgot all my materials. I left it all back at the office, and I actually told them that. I said, you know, I really apologize. I have a, uh, a presentation booklet that I usually bring with me to kind of walk you through what we do. And I remember that the gentleman said to me, this was for a company that sold security systems, and he said, that's fine. He says, don't worry about that. He's like, let's just, let's just have a conversation. We'll see if this can work for us. And he kind of reversed it on me. And he said, let's just have a conversation. Let's just talk. Let's just figure this out. And I, I, thought, I got to thinking after that meeting, and we ended up getting them as a client, I, I thought, let's just talk. That's a powerful concept. <laughs> But if I can make that talk and that conversation be persuasive, then I've got the best of both worlds. And that's where a lot of this kind of hinges us from. And I realized from that day forward that I was transforming from being a sales professional or salesperson into a trusted advisor or a consultant. Because to me, that's how I see a consultant role, is that it's a trusted advisor role. So I, um, I looked at my business differently. I... It, was, it really was a mindset adoption for me because once I changed my mindset, I started acting more like a trusted advisor. I started learning the kinds of questions that I could ask that could make sure that they perceived me as a trusted advisor. We're going to cover those questions in an upcoming lesson. Um, so that way, because only a trusted advisor would ask these questions and ask them in the way that you're going to ask them because a lot of it's in the delivery. None of this really works if you're not in, you know, that, that you know, if you watched the previous lesson, if you're not in that alpha position, if you haven't taken control, if you're not in the leadership position when you're getting ready to present, or really, honestly, getting ready to even start hearing their story, like you've got to establish yourself as a trusted expert very early on and very quickly. And through a lot of the very uh, advanced persuasion strategies I teach, and when I talk about advanced persuasion, I mean persuasion that creates a win-win for both of you. Not, none of this black hat, tricky mind trick stuff. I'm talking about stuff that you can do, things you can say, how you can frame things to be in your advantage to best help them as well. Think about it like this. If you know you can help somebody, it's in your best interest to persuade them to say yes. That's how I look at sales. That's how I've always looked at sales. If I know I can help them, I'm certain they can use my help and they can grow their business, then it is my obligation to use as much persuasive power as I can to get them to say yes, because it's in their best interest. Now, if I don't think I can really help them or I'm not too sure, I just want to get the money and get the sale, and I use persuasion tactics to get the sale and the close, 
then I'm doing it without the integrity that is really the basis for this profession. And don't do it. So, in fact, I don't want you in my course if that's how you behave or act. I don't think we have anybody in my course that's like that. So, um, this was really the initial mindset that was the basis for everything that I ended up doing. And it's the basis for this entire course as well. So, you know, think about it. Who wants to be pitched? You know, when was the last time you heard people say, well, I, you know, I, I saw a guy in another Facebook group say that he gave 100 pitches and nobody bit, right? They said, well, he says, I pitched, I pitched 100 business people and no one's bought from him. And I'll, I wanted this, I didn't say it because I didn't want to be critical and it wasn't my place, but I wanted to say, um, uh, you know, stop pitching. <laughs> stop pitching. Start being a human and talking to people and having real business conversations with them. Understand their business. If you're just interested in you pitching them over and over, you put yourself on the same playing field as 95% of the people out there. And that's what's going to differentiate yourself going to these prospective clients' and offices as well, is that the person that went before you and the person that's going to come in after you are going to be pitching those clients. You're not going to be doing that. You're going to be doing something much different. It's going to catch them off guard, and that alone is going to differentiate yourself.